I have to say that I was a little shocked by this one. The fifth most popular state, which had people relocate to Massachusetts, was Florida. Don't get me wrong. The net migration, it's in Florida's favor. But there are still a considerable amount of people that are coming to the great white north. Now, let's talk about a comparison of these two states and give you a little bit of what to expect if you're considering making a move from Florida to Massachusetts. But first, my name is Jeff Chubb, and I'm a recovering investment banker turned real estate agent that sold more than a thousand houses. Now, we get calls, texts, and emails from folks just like you who are looking to make a move in the Boston metro area, and I absolutely love it. So whether you're looking to make a move in the next nine or 90 days, it doesn't matter. Give us a call, shoot us an email, or stop by youtuberealestateagent.com and just fill in your information, then we'll reach out to you. Okay, let's talk about the cost as the first category. Generally speaking, Massachusetts is more expensive than Florida. Okay, so what do I mean by generally? If you're moving from Miami to Worcester, then you are most likely going to be pretty excited about the bump in value that Worcester is going to offer you. Pre-COVID, this was almost not a fair fight, but COVID has helped level the playing field a bit. Now, NerdWallet.com has a cost of living calculator, and they do the calculator for Miami to Boston. They say that the cost of living is 27% higher in Boston than it is in Miami. In other words, if you live in Miami and make $100,000 of pre-tax money, then you would need to earn a salary of $127,000 in Boston in order to keep that same living standard. Now, I'm going to keep this away from a city-to-city -city comparison, but I figured comparing the two most expensive metros was really a great way to show and differentiate the, the difference in value. Now, when you look at it from a full state versus state, according to MyLifeElsewhere.com, Massachusetts is 16.4% more expensive than Florida. Meanwhile, according to NextBurb.com, the median household income for Massachusetts, it's $89,645 compared to Florida's $63,062. Now, let's talk about the housing market as it's a major part of that cost. Again, using data from NextBurb.com, the median price for a single family home is $561,403. This is compared to Florida's median price of $391,497. Interesting enough, the median rent in Florida is $1,175, which is compared to the median rent in Massachusetts of $1,282. And then there's the difference in property taxes. The median property tax in Florida is $2,338, which is compared to the median in Massachusetts of $5,361. Now, the higher property tax amounts actually make sense since property taxes is a percentage based off the of value of the property which as we know, property values are higher in Massachusetts. 55% of the housing stock in Florida consists of single family homes. This is compared to the 52% in Massachusetts. Meanwhile, 67% are homeowners in Florida compared to 63% in Massachusetts. Other than largest city versus largest city, it'd be real hard to compare a town in Florida to a town in Massachusetts because my general knowledge of towns in Florida well, is well lacking, to say the least. If you're looking for some suggestions or areas or maybe towns that could fit your needs, then you should give me a call. Let's talk about what's important to you and your price range, and then I could probably point you in a couple right directions. When you're talking about housing and comparing Florida and Massachusetts, then it's generally safe to say that Massachusetts, it's going to be more expensive. But Florida is a big state. What makes Florida so awesome is the big state has a lot of coastline, a lot more coastline than Massachusetts. There's some very expensive areas and houses along that coastline. I know this because I browse and dream about a second home down there quite often. Now, let's talk weather. I know why I want a second home in Florida. It's because of the weather. I also know why I want it to be a second home and not a primary home. It's because of the weather. Comparing Massachusetts and Florida is, well, like comparing the two extremes. When people think of Massachusetts, everyone always brings up cold and harsh winters. Now, granted, I live off the coast, but I really don't think they are that bad. The northern part of Boston definitely gets more of a snow beating than the southern part of the state, but I really don't think it's all that bad. Like I said, I mean, I can only think of one year where we got 10 plus feet in snow, and that was a tough year. But if you grew up in Florida and have never really been exposed to New England winters, then you most likely will believe it's miserable. But while our furnaces are cranking to keep us warm and we have the occasional snowstorm to worry about, this is when I get the calls from my father-in-law where it seems that he must always provide the weather report of the 70 degrees in perfect weather. Now, don't get me wrong. Opinions are like belly buttons and while well, everyone's got one. But the winters in Florida, they're near perfect. Then there's the spring and fall, which let's just call those seasons a wash. And then summer comes along 
like the winter perfection for Florida, well, to the summer perfection for Massachusetts. It's not too hot. It's not too humid. It's darn near perfect. This is why so many people come back to New England in the summer. Now, if you like all the seasons, then there's a good chance you're going to like Massachusetts. If snow and some cold weather seems like a cruel and unusual punishment to you, then Florida's weather is probably more your speed. Personally, I love the seasons. I also love the idea of being on a boat 12 months a year. Based on my internal struggles that I have, I really got to call this one a split decision. Now let's talk about taxes. Being a Massachusetts resident, this one stings as I was pulling all this together, quite frankly. Massachusetts has the nickname of Taxachusetts. I do think that is a rather unfair nickname. If anything, it should really be called Fiatusetts. There are small incremental fees all over the place, which, let's be honest, are just taxes. So it's a death by a million cuts, quite frankly, in Massachusetts. But Massachusetts isn't afraid to also throw a bunch of taxes on top of those fees either. So let's start with the income tax. Massachusetts is 5%. Now, Massachusetts also has a recently voted in millionaire's tax and increases the rate to 9% for anything over that $1 million earnings. Florida's income tax is a lot less complicated. It's zero. That's <laughs> like sucks and guns. Sales tax is where Massachusetts has a hair up. Not a leg, but a hair up. Florida has a 6% sales tax rate and then a max local sales tax rate of 2%. This is compared to Massachusetts, whose sales tax rate is 6.25%. Florida's average combined state and local sales tax rate is 7.02%. Like I said, Massachusetts has a hair up on this one. Now, I found an interesting CNN Money article. It lists tax dollars state by state. It lists Florida as the 44th state for total taxes per $1,000. This is compared to Massachusetts, which they had ranked as number 40. So how can a state with no income tax be close to a state with an income tax? When you look at Florida, they are ranked 10th as the worst sales and excise tax per $1,000 at $47.95. And this is compared to Massachusetts, which is $21.52 per thousand. Either way, Massachusetts is not the tax Massachusetts state that it's made out to be. It's not great, but it could definitely be worse. And when you factor in all taxes, Massachusetts and Florida are relatively comparable, according to the CNN Money article. There's a little bit of a different story when I looked at the taxfoundation.org. Now, Tax Foundation ranks Massachusetts as the 37th highest state in the country with an effective tax rate of 11.5% compared to Florida's effective tax rate of 9.1%, which puts them as the 11th most favorable state for tax burdens in the country. So, a little mixed reviews there. Education is generally one of the most important factors when people are considering a move. School state rankings were a little all over the place. And I think it's important to say that it's the municipality that you're in that makes the biggest difference in regards to the quality of the school. So that is where you need to first focus. I have to say, I was very surprised when digging into this data. In the Wild Hub survey, they ranked Massachusetts as number one, while Florida came in at number nine. Now, New US News and Report had Massachusetts as number two. And Florida comes in at 14 when you look at their pre-K through 12th grade rankings. Florida wasn't the slouch then when I thought they were, quite frankly. Again, this really comes down to the area that you end up calling home, whether you're in Florida or Massachusetts. No matter the state, there are some school districts that perform better than others. So let's talk about job opportunities in both states. Now, as economies go, Florida is the number four economy in the entire country, cranking out $1.1 trillion in economic output. This compared to Massachusetts of $544 billion. Currently, on unemployment rate, Massachusetts and Florida are both 2.6%. Both states have strong economies, with both states actually benefiting from COVID for different reasons. Massachusetts is a very strong biotech concentration, while Florida has enjoyed people and companies moving with their feet. The three largest industries by revenue in Massachusetts are the drug, cosmetic, and toiletry industries, life insurance, and then annuities, as well as college and universities. Interesting enough, Hospitals was number four, and biotech was number seven. Meanwhile, in Florida, number one is the aerospace and aviation industry. Number two, it's life sciences, with number three being manufacturing. Now, a big fiber of the Massachusetts economy is higher education. Yes, it is what is tied to a lot of our economic output. But it's also why a lot of companies actually step up, set up shop here. With so many colleges, each year there's a large pool of students to recruit from. And these schools include MIT, which is ranked as the second best school in the country. Harvard, with a ranking at number three. Tufts, which is ranked at 32. Boston College at 36. Boston University at 41. And Northeastern and Brandeis at 44. But Florida also has University of Florida, which is ranked nationally as the 29th best national university. And then Florida State University and University of Miami 
which are both tied at 55, according to U.S. News and Report. The list of the amount of colleges in Massachusetts is so long that, quite frankly, it's exhausting when looking at it. But what I found really interesting is when U.S. News Report adds in state universities into the top school rankings list, then they actually rank Florida as the top school system in the country. Now, I feel like we stepped back talking about education again, so let's round it all out and finish it up by talking about what each state has to offer from outdoor activities to general entertainment. So let's start with why I love Florida. I always joke about I pool and how it costs a fortune to heat while pointing to the Atlantic Ocean. But in Florida, their pool's heated at no charge. When it comes to water and coastline, well, Florida, it's pretty hard to beat. Almost impossible, actually. If the Atlantic coast isn't your speed, then there's the Gulf of Mexico. And don't get me wrong, we have a pretty coastline as well here in Massachusetts. And the Cape, it's amazing. But Florida has the keys. I've also believed that Massachusetts has a lot of green space. Between the Everglades, Big Cypress National Park, Ocala, and Appalachia National Forest, the total percentage of Florida that is covered in parks is 6.63%, compared to Massachusetts and 4.23%. Now, I'm not going to get into the quality of the sports teams, but we can talk about the number of sports teams. Florida has two baseball teams, three football teams, two basketball teams, and two hockey teams. Florida, it's a big state. It makes sense. Massachusetts is one team in each sport category. Now, I hate snakes, so Massachusetts is my bias winner here. We don't have poisonous snakes or pythons. If this isn't the definition of a sound victory, then I quite frankly don't know what is. Now, I guess the important thing to realize is that if you are coming from Florida and have enjoyed everything that they have to offer, then I know Massachusetts is no slouch either. Yes, we don't have 365 days of warm weather, but we've got a lot of other qualities. I love Florida. It's a place that someday I'll have my second home in, but Massachusetts, it's my home. The spring, summer, and fall make up for the sometimes harsh winters. That's my opinion. And like I said earlier, Everyone's got one, and so there's mine. Now, whether you're looking to relocate to Massachusetts in the next 9 or 90 days, then I'd love to chat with you. We'd love to hear about your goals and also talk to you about what you are looking for in your new home to help offer some suggestions or maybe some possible communities that could work for you. All of my contact information, it's in the description below. You can also reach out to me at youtuberealestateagent.com and just fill in your information, and then we'll reach out to you, whatever works best for you. Until next time.